excited to be here and see all of you. I can't see you that well because of the lights, um, which is a new experience for me, but I, um, I'm thrilled that you're all here. Uh, I do see some familiar faces and I see some new faces. And so I'd love to just tell you all a little bit about um, the race and what we have in front of us and a little bit about me. And they'll probably be mixed up and not in that order. Uh, but I think um, for all of us, it has been quite a week. And it's been, as Aliza said, um, quite a time since Trump was elected. For so many of us, the world feels different and scary. Um, but I was asked a couple of weeks ago, well, why, you know, why, tell us in less than five words why you're doing this. And that was really a challenge, and I didn't have a lot of time to think about it, but my answer was absolutely from the heart, which is, this gives me hope. Because everywhere I go, and every night for more than a year, I have been on the campaign trail meeting people from across our community that share the values that I think exemplify our community and are the values we need to see in Washington. So when I first launched this campaign, I had a little slogan that I thought was great, um, and I still do, but I think it's more true than ever, and we've seen it over the last year. What we're seeing is that Washington isn't working, and it's certainly not working for us. And what I think we need is a little more Houston than Washington, D.C. And what do I mean by that? Houston is a city that welcomes immigrants from around the country and around the world. You know, it is hot here. We have mosquitoes and flying cockroaches and you know, lots of humidity and you know, terrible hair days. And if you want to be here and you want to work with us and you want to be a part of this community, we're just so excited you're here. And I think we need to see a little bit more of that out of our elected leaders. I think we need to see more of that across our country. We also work together. You know, people from all backgrounds, all political views, all, all religious faiths, all kinds of experiences come together and work across this community, whether they're working in hospitals, whether they're working in the oil fields. I work in a law firm. Um, that's what I did before I decided to run for Congress. And um, our law firm is as diverse as this city. And it's so exciting to go to work every day and to meet people who are as committed um, to helping each other as I think the people are in Houston. And that's another thing. Um, if I had to sum up what I think is so great about Houston, right? It's welcoming, it's hardworking, we work together, and we care about each other. And that's something that we've all seen in the last year after Hurricane Harvey. Um, I think that there is no better example, but there are other examples of that Houston. And that's the Houston that we are not seeing re reflected in John Culverson, who is the representative for this district. For those of you who don't know him well, though I suspect if you're here, you know something about him. Um, but he is, he's a nine-term incumbent. He has been re-elected without a really tough race in a long time. And he is, is a part of the Tea Party Caucus. He's very far to the right. And I, after Trump was elected, and I looked up at who my elected officials were, Ted Cruz, John Cornyn, John Culberson, Sarah Davis, and Joan Huffman, I thought, I don't think they reflect the values of my community, and they certainly aren't reflecting my values, and they're not advocating for them, and that's what we need. We need somebody who's going to be a partner and an advocate in Congress. It took me a minute to realize that should be me, um, <laughs> but several people um, talked to me about it, and I realized that is what I've been doing for a living for many years, and it's basically who I've been all my life. I've always been an advocate. I've always been someone who speaks out for policies and people and, and institutions and places that I believe in and that I care about. And right now, I care so much about what is happening in our country, and it is time for all of us to stand up and fight back and say, this is the time where we are going to make sure that our country keeps moving in the right direction. I think we're taking a little step back for everyone who watches as much cable news as I do, which can be a dangerous thing. Um, it can be really scary right now, but doing this for a year, I can tell you there are so many people in this community who are committed to each other, who are committed to our country, who are committed to making this the best possible country it can be, the best community it can be, and I know that we can do it together. And the best thing that I can tell you is what I've seen happen in our own campaign. Um, there's some other great candidates here. It's been a real privilege to do this and to get to know so many incredible people, and it's it's candidates coming out of the woodwork. It's people who've never run for office before who are saying, this is not who we are, and if it is, it's not who we want to be.
but it's also people at every single level. It's high school students volunteering for the first time. It's people showing up in phone banking or knocking on doors for the first time. It's people who have gone from voters to precinct chairs um, in one election cycle. People across our community are standing up and speaking out and talking about what our values are and who we are. And as a result, we have an incredible chance to win this seat. As Aliza said, um, this is one of the this is one of the hottest races in the country this year. It wasn't exactly what I was expecting uh, when I first started doing this, but several publications have said this is one of the top ten, top two races. This is one of the best chances to flip a seat um, in the country, and it's because John Culberson has really been absent from our community, and people are ready for real leadership, for someone who really is from and understands and cares about and will advocate for our community. And I think that um, we just had, as many as you know, a, um, a very crowded primary field. Uh, there were seven people, eight at one time, who put their hats in the ring to um, run against John Culberson. And what that meant was that there were eight people who were out every day educating our community about why John Culberson needed to be replaced. And it meant that in our Democratic primary, the primary voter turnout increased fivefold, which is incredible. And we have so much energy and so much excitement that after the election was over, um, the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee did a poll, and we are polling within two points of John Culberson. Oh, yeah. uh, and that is within the margin of error, so everyone reminds me it's um, statistically tied. Uh, you know, I'm a lawyer, I'm very um, uh, sort of by the book, but I think that what we've seen on the ground, we're way ahead. And that's because our campaign office is filled every weekend with volunteers, and every day I walk in and I see people I've never met before who are there on the phones, who are showing up when it's 100 degrees outside to go knock on doors, people writing postcards, people organizing house parties in their neighborhood, and I'm gonna introduce in a second our field director who can tell you how you all can do some of those kinds of things too. Um, because the best thing about doing it is, I think for me, as the candidate, it gives me hope, but I think for the volunteers, and I think for everybody that's been associated with this project, it is really wonderful to connect with like-minded friends and neighbors, people you didn't know before, all working together to try to put our country in the right direction. And what I have seen is really inspiring. Um, so I think that uh, we have, I guess Saturday will mark 100 days until the election. So we have just a little bit of a ways to go, uh, but it'll be here before we know it. And what I can tell you is that the support that we've gotten from this community, the spontaneous support has really been overwhelming. So I'm incredibly grateful to everyone for showing up tonight. I'm incredibly grateful for everyone who's been participating and um, helping in every way they can. We have an incredible ticket across Harris County. Um, we have great candidates running for state legislature, great candidates running for judge. We have Beto running for Senate, which is pretty exciting. Uh, so we have, we have just great candidates, and I think that we, there's no doubt in my mind that if we all work together, we will win across the board. We can turn Harris County blue again in this cycle. We've done it every presidential cycle, so now that we're in the midterms, this is our last chance. And, when, and as Lisa said, when Harris County goes blue completely and Texas goes blue, that's it. It changes the future of our country, Yay. and that's what's in front of us. So I don't, I can't see, but uh, Colin Steele, who's our field director, is here somewhere, and he's going to get up and talk a little bit about, where is he? Right. Oh, he's right there. Um, he's going to talk a little bit about things that we have going on, um, but I just want to thank you all for being here and for taking part in this, and I'm so grateful for your support and look forward to working with you as we move forward to November, and then not to forget in the years ahead. I think that's something John Culberson's done. Um, is forgot about the people who lived here, and that's something I'm never going to do. And I'm excited to work with you on this election and then the re-election starting the next day. So thanks so much, you guys.